All right. Thank you for joining us for this quick prophecy update. Hey, the Equality Act equals superiority of sinners over God. All right. So let's take a look at this. You know, um, from the uh, MSN.com, there was a news article titled Lauren Bobert calls Equality Act supremacy of gays, lesbians and transvestites. And it says here, Republican Colorado Representative Lauren Bobart has said that the LGBTQ rights bill known as the Equality Act is actually about the supremacy of gays and lesbians and transvestites above all other Americans. And she nailed it on the head. She's exactly right because that's exactly what this is all about. Okay. Um, Moving on here, um, through this article from msn.com, says, calling the bill the so-called Equality Act, Bobert said, we all know that that's just the Democrats using a play on words. There's nothing about equality in the act. If anything, it's supremacy of gays and lesbians and transvestites, okay? Again, so she's very smart. She knows that the liberals, the Democrats, the left, they use little play on words. They make it sound so nice, equality and, and all these things. And it and it's totally opposite of uh, equality, okay? Um, this isn't about equality. It is about the normalization. Now, listen to me closely. This Equality Act is about the normalization of sin, or the superiority of the sinner over the law of God, while praising the wicked and condemning the righteous. And if this bill has already passed the House of Representatives, and if passed by the Senate, it would protect deviant sexual behavior while criminalizing, check this out, criminalizing Christianity. This is huge, and you, we've got to stand against it, my friends. We've got to be aware of it. You cannot fall asleep, and you cannot be duped into believing things that have nice sounds to them, like equality, because everybody thinks equality, oh, I hear that word equality, and it makes me feel like, well, everybody should be treated equal. Everybody should be treated the same. So I'm for that. Just put me down. We cannot be duped by the lies of the enemy. The end game is the criminal, criminal, criminalization of Christianity, okay? And the legalization of everything that is vile and wicked. That's the end game, my friends. And I hope you're awake. I hope you're paying attention. Um, Luke chapter 13, verse 5, and, and I'll say this. This, this, um... Equality Act would make it illegal for us to even teach the gospel. Well, what is the gospel? Well, the gospel message is simply this. We are all sinners that need to repent and, and, uh, and believe upon the blood shed upon the cross. Believe upon the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that he frees us from our sins. But if, if we can't teach repentance, if we can't say a sin is a sin, then we cannot preach the gospel, my friends. You see how serious? Well, oh, but I can still go to church. Uh, uh, you know, the Equality Act doesn't prevent me from going to church and being nice and sing songs. But if you, <laughs> but that's not church, my friends. That's not the gospel. That's another gospel. Because if you can go to a church that doesn't define what sin is according to the Bible, that is not church. That is a false gospel. Okay, That's no different than any, uh, anything of the world. Homosexuality, transgenderism, and all these other sexual deviant behaviors are sins. They're not equal. They're not the same as righteous acts. They should be called what they are. They're, they're misfits, okay? Absolute misfits like they used to be. Oh, that, Pastor Ben, that's really hard. Hey, when you, when I got a few verses here in a little bit in the book of Revelation that says that these types of people will not, will not enter into the kingdom of heaven, my friends. 
unless they repent of their wicked deeds. All right. Oh, actually, I should go back a verse here because I never read that verse. So Jesus says, I'm losing all my verses here. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Jesus says this. If you say, well, Pastor Ben, that was a little hard. This is what Jesus teaches, my friends. Luke chapter 13, verse 5, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Okay? So I'm not being mean to these people. I'm trying to help them by telling them the truth. Because they're going to hell if they continue to think that their sexual deviant behavior should be normalized or should be equal to somebody who's trying to live righteously. It's not equal. There's nothing equal about it. And if we try to equalize it, guess what's going to happen? Christianity becomes the persecuted group. The righteous become persecuted while the wicked are praised and protected. That's what this Equality Act is all about. That's what it's all about. Re in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, another um, verse about what the gospel is all about, what Christianity's main message should be. Repent ye therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Okay? Repent. Stop doing wicked things, okay? You don't say, well, God, I don't need to listen to you. My ways are equal. So this Equality Act tries to say that sinners are equal or above the law of God or above God himself or above God's throne. Think about that. It's blasphemy. It's utter blasphemy. Every so every person that claims every decent person ought to be up in arms about this and uh, run this bill the heck out of our country and put it down in the gutter where it belongs. It's filth. It's disgusting. Men trying to act like women, going into women's bathrooms. It's a pervert. It's perverted. And we need to call it what it is. Shame on them for their disgusting immoral acts. They should grow up. And any church, and I got a list of a bunch of religious organizations and churches that are supporting this nonsense. Yeah, a lot. A lot of big name denominations. Acts chapter 17 verse 30 says this, And the times of this ignorance God winked at, there was a time when God winked at ignorant sin. But now, ever since Christ came, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. That's what Jesus commands. He doesn't command equality. Because if you truly love your neighbor, like Jesus says, you will tell them what they're you'll tell them they're going to hell if they're going to hell. You don't say, oh, you're wonderful. God bless you for coming out and being a loving person. Have, you lo have, have, have Christians lost their minds? Has this, this generation, has this generation lost its mind? Of course it has. This is stuff is right out of the gutter, right out of the pits of hell, and it's being normalized. You know, and, and what they're going to do is they're going to charge, uh, uh, you know, biblical teaching. They're going to say biblical teaching. They already are. They're going to make laws that say it's hate speech. For me to say what I've just said now, and I'm just quoting from the Bible and explaining what the Bible says, that's going to be deemed hate speech. Well, you know who's behind that? None other than Satan himself because he hates God and everything to do with God. He's the real hater. Blasphemer. Romans 12, verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, 
but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good, what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay. Now this is, they're asking us to do the opposite with this equality act. They're trying to, they're trying to transform us to the ways of the world, to pagan sexual immorality, deviancy, uh, per, every form of perverseness that you can think about. They want to draw us into that. This Equality Act is an attempt for them to force us into it. Are you, a, are you really a Christian? Or do you just go to church on Sunday to go there and feel good? Or are you standing up for the Word of God? That's the question I have here today. You better check yourselves, my friends. Are you a real Christian? Because we're moving into some times that you need to stand up for the truth or get out of the way. Or be honest with yourself and say, you're a pagan. You're a devil worshiper. You love this stuff. Stop claiming to be a Christian if you're not one. That's worse than saying that you're just a pagan devil worshiper. But that's what they're trying to do. Force us to conform. Force us to accept sin as normal. And not only as normal, but righteous. But righteous. Equality. Equality. Okay? He that walketh, Proverbs 13, verse 20. And I'm going to read a couple scriptures that say we are not supposed to be yoked together. We're not supposed to be companions of these fools. Okay? This is... this. Proverbs 13, verse 20 says this, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. And many, you know, any church that uh, supports this stuff or combines itself with this stuff, they're going to be destroyed. They're going to be destroyed. Now, I'm bringing up these verses for another reason here. I'll, I'll, I'll explain in a minute. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That, that means to be equal with them, yoked, become one, together, the same. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Okay? What are we? We're not the same as them. We're not supposed to pretend to be the same with them. That's the purpose of being a Christian. We're different. We, we repent of those things. We don't, we don't want to be a part of that nonsense. But yet they're trying to yoke us together with them with this equality act. I don't want to be a part of these people that are going to hell. No way. No way. Um, but I'll say this. This equality act would force businesses and individuals, and uh, it's just on and on the list goes, will force you to accept this behavior. For instance, if you're a business owner, you own a small business, uh, you will be forced to hire a man who thinks he's a woman. Or you'll be forced to hire some other person with some other sexual deviant behavior. As a Christian, we're not supposed, if you're a Christian business owner, you want moral and righteous people working for you or running your business. That's, that's, that's in our core. We don't go and hire some sexual deviant person to take care of our business if we're a Christian. But yet this Equality Act will force you to do that. Will force you to do that. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 15, And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Again, more scriptures that say we're not equal. Christ is not equal to Belial or equal to the devil. Okay? And, and the believers are not equal to the infidels. When you become a believer, you are, uh, as 2 Peter says, you are part of a royal priesthood. You're part of a royal priesthood. That means you're over and above, not as a you know, arrogant and stuff like that, but you're over and above the people of the world. You're here to shed a light upon them, to show, to show the way. Not to be joined to them, not to be equal with them. 
You're supposed to be here. They're down here and you want to save them. You want to bring them up. But what they want to do is they want to make you equal so you can, so we can all go to hell together. That's the name of the game, my friends. This Equality Act seeks to bring you to hell with them. You want that? Oh, I don't, you know, I don't like pastors that talk about hell. Have you ever studied the teachings of Jesus Christ? He talked more about hell than he did about heaven. Think about that. Think about that. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. All throughout the Bible, we are not commanded to not be equal to this behavior, these sins. 2 Corinthians six seventeen says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. Be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. You see that? We're not supposed to be together. We're not supposed to be yoked together. We're not supposed to be equal. We're supposed to be separate from this stuff. Come out from among them. All right. Now, I'm going to cover, uh, this is from wikipedia.com about the Equality Act. And here are some support, some, some, uh, some organizations, national, state, and local organizations that support the Equality Act. I think you ought to know who, the, who these organizations are. Okay? These include the national organizations related to human rights and social justice. Hey, I got a church down the road here that claims to be, you know, full of new life. Okay? Full of new life, new birth. Big church. Okay, big fancy church, lots of people go there, and their assistant pastor and their head pastor teach social justice. Okay, down at New Life Christian Center over here in Princeton, Minnesota. I'll say it because it's time we start calling out names. Got it? Such as American Civil Liberties Union, Anti Defamation League, Gleason, Human Rights Campaign, Human Rights Watch, the Southern, Southern Poverty Law Center. Um, Lambda Legal, National Organization for Women, NAACP and AARP, okay? Um, support, yeah, I'm, you're going to be surprised here in a minute. Supporting organizations include those from national professional organizations such as the American Psychological Association, American Medical Association, uh, American uh, Counseling Associ Association. Man, I wouldn't want to go to those counselors. Whoo! Oh, man, American counseling? You're going to counsel me and you believe in this? You need some counseling, my friends, from the word of God. All right? American Federation of Teachers, American Bar Association, and the American Academy of P Pediatrics. You want those people taking care of your kids? As well as the National PTA. The act is supported by over 180 American businesses and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. These include internet and technological companies such as Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, eBay, IBM, Facebook, uh, Airbnb, whatever that is, Twitter, Intel, and Netflix. Other companies supporting the act include Visa, MasterCard, Abercrombie & Fitch, Alaska Airlines, and American Airlines. Look at this stuff. Mystery Babylon, right? The great corporations of the earth get together with Mystery Babylon to promote her filth. Revelation uh, 18 and 19, 17, 18, and 19. Religious organizations, this is what I wanted you guys to see. This is more alarming than, than all that other stuff. Religious organizations and registered charities that have given public support to the act include Advocates for Youth and various Catholic leaders and lobbying organizations such as Father James Martin SJ Network and, oh, oh, check this out, Dignity, Dignity USA. There's nothing dignified about this filth. You, that's what they always do. They always say the opposite of what they are. They call evil good and good evil. And dumb people, biblically illiterate people believe it. 
Pastor Ben, you're a little bit of ups- upset today. Hey, we need to be upset about this. Somebody needs to shake this boat and wake people up. Or at least try, and then the blood's off our hands. I say it, I deliver it from the word of God, and it's up to you, my friend, to act on it because it's not my problem after that. God doesn't require uh, your actions upon me. He just requires that I tell you the truth from his word. Catholic theologian and nun Joanne Christer, or Chidester released a statement saying, the Equality Act must be, pa- must be passed, must be extended, and must be lived if religion itself is to be true. What the heck? What are you talking about? What kind of a theologian is that? It sounds like a theo- it sounds like one of Satan's theologians is what it sounds like, claiming to be a Christian, a wolf in sheep's clothing. This must be passed if religion is to be true. What about all those scriptures I read about the gospel from the New Testament that says that we ought to separate ourselves from this stuff? We don't be yoked to it. Now they're telling us if religion is to be true, this is a supposed Christian? That's no Christian at all, my friends. Other faith groups, this this gets even worse. It's going to maybe touch a lot of you. Okay, And if you're going to one of these churches, you can't, can't sit there and keep doing it, my friends. It's getting too late in the game for you to be playing church with these people. If they're not teaching the word of God and they're bending over backwards to this stuff, you better run from there and start your own church or find a local house church or something that isn't peddling this nonsense. Other faith groups and organizations that have publicly supported the act include the Episcopal Church, the United Methodist Church, the United Church of Christ, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, More Light Presbyterians, More Light? What? African American Ministries in Action, the Association of Welcoming and Affirming Baptists, the Union for Reform Judaism, United Synagogue of Conservative Judaism, the Reconstructionist Rabbinical Association, Muslims for Progressive Values, and the Hindu American Foundation, and the Unitarian Universalist Association. Okay, this stuff, my friends, the Mystery Babylon is taking over all of our major churches. And most of the people in these churches have fallen asleep. They go there, they, they hear what they want to hear. Well, oftentimes the pastor will say something that will be so vague, so incomplete, that you could go there saying, well, I think he was, you know, I think that was a conservative message. And then other, pa- other people go there and say, I think that, w- that, that, that was kind of a liberal message. All right? If you don't know what the he- what, where your pastor stands because he's so vague, then he's doing it on purpose to keep you in his church so he can have a paycheck. You got that? That's what it's about, my friends. All right, closing this up. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Okay? Blessed are those that do his commandments. This is the New Testament, my friends. This is not the Old Testament. And yet it still says you must follow the Ten Commandments. The homosexuality did not become a sin because Jesus came. Okay? I know there's a lot of false Jesus teachers out there, false gospels out there that say all this nonsense. Okay? They've outsmarted the Old Testament and things like that. It's a lie. Jesus says in another place, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love him, if you love Satan, you will tell people that LGBTQ is okay. It's as simple as that. Any Christian that accepts LGBTQ is a Satan worshiper, is a Satan lover, and they better know it. They better know it because they don't love our Lord Jesus Christ. And I can judge that. I can judge that for sure. 
okay? That's one of the things a Christian can judge, okay? I don't judge my brother if he's got little faults and poke, and poke him in the eye and say, oh, look at your little sins. But if somebody supports abominable, sinful acts and says it's from God, they worship Satan. All right. Revelation 22, verse 15, for without, for without what? Out of the kingdom of heaven. For without our dogs. Do you know what these dogs are? These are homosexual males. Okay? You get the position? You get it? That's what it means. That's why the word is there. And sorcerers and whoremongers, all kinds of sexual deviant behavior, transgenderism, lesbianism, all that stuff, that's all whoremongering. And murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Okay? So what is God going to do? Does he make these sinners equal? No. He says, you're not getting in. I will discriminate against you. Okay? They will be discriminated against. There will be discrimination in the kingdom of heaven. God will say, you're not getting in because of your actions, because of your sins, and you will come on in because you obey the commandments and you believe in the and you've repented and you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? There will be discrimination. This this all this not this equality and we're all the same and all this stuff is a bunch of garbage from the pits of hell. Okay? Christians never believe that stuff. It's never been a part of our vocabulary. It's not part of the biblical vo vocabulary. Yeah, we got Christians repeating this stuff. They're not in church, my friends. They may have a cross over their church, you know, a cross over their church, but they're in a temple of Satan when they're teaching this crap, okay? This crap. All right, that is it. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that prophecy message. Uh, as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you, okay? Uh, I do enjoy teaching the, tr uh, teaching the truth. Sometimes we got to get pretty firm and sometimes we got to get indignant about it because otherwise people don't even listen. And um, if this passes, my friends, which it does have a little bit of an uphill, I hear it must have a 60, uh, 60 senators must uh, vote for it. So it has to have a super majority, I guess. And I haven't looked into all the rules, but the House of Representatives passed it. So if for some reason we don't put enough heat on our senators and people aren't indignant about this, some of these senators may waver. And then, may, hey, maybe it won't pass this time, but maybe it'll pass next year. Okay, Think about when homosexual marriage was uh, legalized by the Supreme Court and other means. It, it, it was rejected for a while, and then they just keep pushing it, and then you start breaking down. Oh, they push, you give. They push, you give, until you give it all away. Okay? Well, it's, time, it's time that we start doing the pushing and start pushing back against this filth and immorality and call it what it is. It's a sin. It's not equal. There's nothing equal about it, and there never has been anything equal about it. God bless you. Stay in his word every single day so that you can be a Christian overcomer.